very tall. So feel your bottom wiggling in and maybe you can take your yoga glue stick and you can put it on your hands like this and then rub it like that and then put some yoga glue onto your bottom and then wiggle it so you really are feeling the floor and then imagine somebody is pulling, imagine there's a string attached to the top of your head. And if you're maybe slouching like this, somebody is pulling you and making you sit very, very tall. And then, you still hear some noise in the background, you guys, just so you know. Trying to like figure out like- Wait a second. Mm -hmm. Mute them. Whoops. Can I mute them? Oh, um, yes, you, um, uh, <laughs> so, Mandy, can we start again? Of course we can. All right. <laughs> Should I stop now? Yes, that would be great. Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> All right. Well, Welcome, find a seat on your mat and grab your yoga glue stick and put that yoga glue onto your hands and rub your hands like this and then put that yoga glue onto the bottom, wiggle the bottom and then feel how um, grounded you are and then imagine string attached to the top of your head. And maybe if you're slouching, somebody is pulling you all the way up and you sit very tall. And then put your hands together like this. We are making a candle. So you um, interlace your fingers and your index fingers, you push them together like that. And then imagine there is a flame, a light on your candle. And you want to blow that candle out. But you don't want to, um, you know, that the wax is going everywhere. So you have to have a nice and gentle but steady exhale to blow it out. All right, we take a deep breath in and then blow out that candle. And again, take a deep breath in through the nose. Now imagine that the candle is a little further away. So you stretch your arms out a little further away from you. And you still try to have a nice steady breath. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Now imagine that we are not uh, blowing the light out. We are imagining, and we're going to close our eyes because it always works better when we close the eyes, that instead of blowing the light out, we are lighting the candle. And it's going to be our magic story light. So close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and then blow your light on. Keep your eyes closed and just imagine your story candlelight burning. And that candlelight can have any color you like. It could be silver, it could be gold, it could be pink, it could be orange. Whatever you think your story light looks like, that's what it looks like. 
and then slowly bring your hands down into your lap and open your eyes. You are sitting in crisscross applesauce right now. So maybe switch your legs around. And I tell you a story about a leprechaun. Now, leprechauns are all over here in Ireland and they are magical beings. They are some kind of fairy and they have some magical abilities. For example, they're very famous for that. If you are lucky and you catch a leprechaun, then you are under no circumstances to take your eyes off them because they are disappearing. They vanish. So now we practice. If we catch one, what we are going to do. So bring your hands together like this and your thumbs, put them together like that. Your thumbs are going to be a leprechaun that you just got. Now, you are not allowed to take your eyes off your thumbs, your leprechaun. And now move your thumbs all the way down to the floor and your head goes all the way down. And then you lift your thumbs all the way up and your head goes all the way up. You're not taking your eyes off your leprechaun. Now lower back down and we lift it one more time. Lift it all the way up. And then bring your hands right in the middle and don't look away. Look at your leprechaun. Now, one thumb goes down and the right thumb looks up. That's your leprechaun. Now we are moving the thumb to the side. Look at your thumb. Don't move your eyes away. And now we try the same thing with the other side. So this thumb goes down and the other one goes up. And we are turning the head to the other side and back. Now, my friends, now it's getting complicated because we are making a big circle. We are going all the way down, all the way to the side and up and to the other side and back down. Change the direction. Don't take your eyes off the leprechaun. All the way up, all the way down. Whoa, very good job. Maybe, maybe you could catch a leprechaun. So they are also famous for that they know where the rainbow ends. So we are putting the hands down and we're gonna make a rainbow. So lift your arms all the way up and make a beautiful rainbow when you bring your hands back down. Just imagine all the colors. Lift your arms, reach up high, and then bring your arms back down. Now we are making a rainbow, or maybe half a rainbow, just with one hand. So take your index finger and point it down to the side. The other hand, you put down onto the mat, and then you lift and make a beautiful rainbow, half of a rainbow, and bring your hand back down. Perfect. And then you point with your other hand, and we make a beautiful rainbow on this side too, and lower your hand back down. Beautiful. The other thing that they are absolutely famous for is that they are brilliant shoemakers. So we are coming into a pose that we sometimes do when we do a butterfly. But also we call this pose in yoga, cobbler pose. And cobblers is an old word for a shoemaker or for somebody that can fix your shoes. So what they would do is they would put your the feet together and then they would put the shoe they would fix or make in between the shoe feet right so put them together like that and then we are getting ready to make some shoes so get your hands ready and we turn to one side and we get a big hammer and then we put the hammer down and then we turn to the other side and we get some nails and put them down Turn your body to the side and you get some leather and all sorts of other magic materials to make beautiful shoes. Put it down. And then 
And at last, we go over to this, and there's a magic box. And this magic box has all sorts of um, bits and bobs that you need in fairyland for shoes. So you turn back and you put it back down. And then let's make some shoes. We're going to tap, tap, tap with our feet and make the noise that a leprechaun would make when they would make shoes. So lean back. Wait a second, I'll show you from the side. Lean back and we go tap, tap, tap. Oh, very good. Now, the other thing that they are very famous for is that they are very fast and that they can disappear. Now let's stand up and run very, very fast. Very good. And then they disappear. So let's come down in rock pose, but nice and slow. So we bend the knees, and then we come into rock pose or mouse pose. <clears throat> Now, leprechauns have to make all sorts of shoes. They make shoes for humans, and they make shoes for fairies. So the shoes for humans, they would make shoes for humans that maybe have pointy toes. Now, let's make pointy toes. So we are walking on our heels. We lift our toes, and we are walking on our mat, or wherever you are, on our heels. <clears throat> lift our toes and make them look pointy. Lift, 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 and walk in. I know, it's not that easy. I bet you can do it wonderfully. <clears throat> All right, then we would make shoes <clears throat> that had high heels, right? So let's lift on our tippy toes and become tall. And we are walking down and we are on our tippy toes. We lift our heels and we walk around. Beautiful shoes, pointy toes and high heels. And one more round. Perfect. So then they would also make shoes fairies and for fairies and the shoes you have to put some magic into the shoes so we are coming into magic wand pose or surfer pose so we are opening up our feet like this and we turn one foot out and we bend that knee you know that pose lift your arms remember surfer pose and then we are swishing a little bit of magic or a lot of magic into those shoes. Perfect. Lift your arms, bring your hands back onto your hips, turn that foot in, turn the other foot out, and then we bend that knee, we lift our arms, and we swoosh some magic into those belly shoes. You can make a magic sound too, right? Perfect. Now, lift your arms, breathe, and then put your hands back onto your hips and heel to your feet back together. My favorite thing is when I heard that they would make shoes that are very, very light. Shoes that could fly. They're as light as a, a ray of sun or maybe a cloud. So sit back down and we make floaty shoes. Lots of magic in those shoes. So lean back and we are, can you lift up one floaty shoe? Can you wiggle your toes? Oh, wow, those shoes are so magical. Now lift up the other one, oh, floating up. Wiggle your toes. Fantastic. Now, can you put up, can they float up both at the same time? One, 
two, wow. And can you maybe lift your hands? Oh, wow. Look these shoes. Fantastic. Now, <clears throat> we also made shoes for the big giant. His name was Finn McCool. So stand all the way up. You are a big, big giant. So we are stomping and stomping. And then we hold on to our feet and we are stumping. Clump, 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 clump. Oh, is that a house? We have to step over that house. Oh, clump, clump. Oh, yes, big, big, giant shoes. They also would make shoes for fairy royalty, the king and the queen of the fairies that sit in a throne. So have your feet like this, and then we sit down in the invisible fairy throne, okay? So put your hands onto your hips, and then we sit down in our invisible chair. And if you like, you can lift your arms. Whoa, that is some throne they're sitting on. Beautiful. Gold and silver and diamonds, sparkles. Arms back down. Hmm. Now, our story begins in a forest. There's a big tree, and right in the bottom of the tree lives a little man. So now, put your hands into your hips. We are coming into tree pose. So remember, every tree looks a little different. So you can put your heel on top of your foot. You can leave your hands right here. You can put your hands in front of your chest, or you lift your hands up in the air and make branches growing tall into the sky. And you feel the roots are growing down, down deep into the earth. And then bring your hands in front of your chest and we switch to the other side. Take your time. <clears throat> Fantastic. Now again, maybe first, imagine roots growing down, down deep into the earth. And you become a really strong, tall tree. Lift your arms to the sun. Breathe. And even if you wobble, because there's a wind, you find your belly. And then bring your hands in front of the chest. So come back into mountain pose. Now, this little man was making shoes that were absolutely fantastic. He made so many shoes that his pot of gold was filling up and was, you know, full and flowing over with gold. And one day he decided that the sun was shining and he would go outside and he would walk outside. So first we say, hello sun, and we stretch all the way up, say hello sun. And then we bend all the way down, we say, hello green grass. Perfect. And he is marching. <clears throat> to his gate, to the garden gate. Let's open that gate so we go back down onto our knees like this. <clears throat> and then we are stretching out one leg. You know that one, right? Yes. Bring one hand onto the leg, lift your arm all the way up, and then slide your hand down and come into open the garden gate pose and then slowly come back bring your knees back down and we do the same thing on the other side hand goes on to the leg the other knee floats all the way up we have to close the garden gate right so close the garden gate perfect and come back Come back into cobbler pose or butterfly pose if you like that. 
So bring the feet together and sit really tall. The little man was working. He had so much fun making those beautiful shoes. Let's tap. Bring your knees together and tap. One, two, three. That tapping, that happy tap, tap, tap could be heard for miles. There was a man walking through the fields and he could hear that tap, tap, tap. And he was wondering what that was. And suddenly he came closer and closer to that sound. But there was grass, high grass in the way. But he had a kind of, he had a little bit of an idea what that might be, but he wasn't sure. So let's come into table because he was sneaking up on our little leprechaun. So we are coming into um, table pose first. So hands and knees. And then he was um, sneaking a little. So I shall be from the front. <clears throat> so we are putting one foot right in between the hands and we are leaning forward. We couldn't see through that grass. So he put his hand onto the knee and he pushed himself up a little bit. He was trying to look over the grass. He could not see anything. That grass was tall. He tried the other side. Put your hands now inside of your foot and walk your foot out a little bit. So he was leaning on his forearms. He was thinking, maybe I look through the grass down. So he was coming onto his forearms and showing from the side. <clears throat> One foot is forward and then come all the way down. He was trying to see. No. He could not see anything on this side. So slide your foot back and then bring your other foot forward. And he was leaning forward again. Could not see anything. He put his hands onto his knee and lifted up to look over the grass. Nothing. Let's try again all the way down. So you put your hands on the inside, right? You can walk your foot out a little bit and then we lean forward and maybe we can come onto our forearms. i show you again from the front. So this is what it would look like, right? And then maybe you can come onto your elbows all the way down here. <gasps> no, he couldn't see anything. But then he had an idea. He was lying on his belly. Come all the way down onto your belly. And then reach forward with your arms like this. And one, two, three, grab your hands together. He caught the little leprechaun. Come back up into easy pose or crisscross applesauce. He was looking at the little leprechaun. He was so happy because he knew that now the leprechaun would grant him three wishes. And he said, I know all about you. And can you see that I'm not taking my eyes off you? Because I know that if I take my eyes off you, you will disappear. <gasps> Whoa, you have to grant me three wishes and do it now. The leprechaun was in a stressful situation here now. He is a very little fella. And that big man was holding him. And, but he thought then, hmm, what do I do? And he learned, maybe in leprechaun school, a fantastic magic trick. And I'm gonna tell you that secret magic trick. He would say, or he would think to himself, he put his hands onto his heart and he would say, Oh, fiddly fee, you can trick me, for I am as smart as smart can be. I breathe in deep. I breathe out long. 
Watch how calm and clear I become. That is how a leprechaun can trick out everybody. And he said to the big man, I think his name was Tom, he said, Tom, I grant you those three wishes. No problem at all. But if I were you, I would be very careful and I would be thinking about what my three wishes would be. You can have everything, anything in the whole world, but only three wishes. So be careful. Hmm, thought Tom, still looking at the leprechaun. He is right. I really have to think about this. And he thoughtfully looked up at the sky and he saw the stars twinkling. Come up in some twinkling star pose, my friends. Open up your feet like this. <laughs> Fix your clothes and then stretch your arms out. And we are twinkling with our fingers and we are in star pose. <gasps> and right then, in the middle of the clouds, the moon came out. Let's come into moon pose. So that's a little tricky as well. So you can be on the floor, on your knees, like this. If you feel like you're a little wobbly, come onto your knees. And then we can come into moon pose like that. If you feel like you have something to hold on to, or maybe you even have a yoga block at home or a chair, or something where you can hold on to, we can come into five more pose. So we are putting our hand down onto the floor or onto something. And then we lift our leg up, we flex the foot. And then if you like, you can lift your arm up all the way. The moon looked beautiful. Now come into moon pose on the other side. So we put the block down or something else. And then we are lowering the hand down first. And then we lift up one leg and lift up one arm. Moon pose, half moon pose. We lower everything back down. But of course, when Tom had looked up into the sky to think about his beautiful three wishes, he took his eyes off the leprechaun and the leprechaun disappeared. Disappear. Make yourself as small as a rock. He vanished. Hmm. The next day was beautiful again. The sun was out and the little leprechaun had his breakfast. He was sitting on his table and he had a beautiful pot of porridge. Now lift up one spoon and we are stirring our porridge. And then maybe the other way. Very good. Now, the other side, lift up the other spoon and stir your porridge. And then we stir it the other way. It looks a little hot, let's blow it a little. <gasps> and just when he was about to have the first spoon of his beautiful porridge, he thought, hmm. I have a taste for something sweet. And he rubbed, come into it then, Christmas episodes. He rubbed his belly and he was tapping his head, thinking about what could it be. Let's change to the outside. Rub the belly and tap the head. I know. <laughs> One side works better than the other. Honey, he thought. I go to my beehive. And I get some honey that I can put in my porridge and it will taste delicious. So he walked out and he walked through a beautiful field and then to a big hedgerow, big, big sort of bush, right? Let's make that hedgerow. So we are opening up the hedge, right? We are opening up the feet. We are turning one foot out. We are bending one knee. Now, so you're gonna put the elbow slightly, very lightly onto the knee and then we lift the arm overhead. That is one side of that beautiful hedge. And then we switch to the other side. 
Turn in, turn the other one out. We bend that knee, elbow goes down, you lift the arm. Other side of your bush, of your head roll. And right in there, he leaned forward and he got his honey from his beehive. He was also a little bit of a bee whisperer, so the bees know him and they would love to give him some honey. Now, he and Joe, your feet back together. He would sit down and he could not wait to have some honey. He wouldn't wait until he would go home for his porridge. So sit down, stretch your legs out like this, and maybe you can flex your feet, right? Pull them up. Sit really tall, remember that. Um, string attached to the top of your head, put it all the way up. And then lean forward and eat your honey. That honey was the sweetest thing he had eaten in a long time. And he was making a lot of noise. He was saying, mm, and ah, and he couldn't stop eating. So not so far away from the little leprechaun eating his honey, there was a woman walking with her dog, come into dog pose. So we come into table again, and we are um, maybe wagging the tail, okay? So I have to fix my hand. <laughs> so tuck your toes under, lift all the way up, and then if you want, you can stay here, you can make some dog sounds like or you can wag the tail lift one leg up you can even bend the knee if you like and then you lower that down and you lift the other side and you can bend and wag your tail and then come all the way back down the woman heard the little leprechaun making all that noise eating his honey and she thought oh I know who that is. And she was doing exactly the same thing. She sneaked up on the little leprechaun. Come onto your belly. <clears throat> she was smarter than the first guy. She went straight onto her belly. She slid down her arms and she lifted her head up like that. It is a leprechaun, she thought. Now I have to be very careful and I have to catch him. So she reached through the grass and lifted her arms. One, two, three. She got him. She was so happy she could not believe it. And her dog was beside her and he was howling because she knew she was holding him like this, that he would have a pot of gold. And she said to him, Leprechaun, I know everything about leprechauns. I'm not taking my eyes off you. And I want your pot of gold now. Oh, that was again that stressful situation. And now you know that magic secret trick he did. He put his hands on his heart. He closed his eyes. And he thought. Oh, Philly, you can trick me, for I am as smart as smart can be. I breathe in deep. I breathe in, I breathe out long. Watch how calm and clear I become. And then he knew what he had to do. He said to the woman who was holding him, yes, of course, you can have my pot of gold. I show you where it is. And off they went to the big, big hedgehog. Keep walking. And he said right there in that bush, that is where the pot of gold is. So go and get it. She was holding that little leprechaun. And she was looking at him. She knew if she would take her eyes off him, he would disappear. So now you turn one foot out and the other foot in with it. You lift one hand. And now imagine there's that big hedge. 
and you're reaching in. Keep looking at that leprechaun. Reach in as far as you can. And then maybe put your hand down and lift your arm all the way up. Keep looking at your leprechaun. She could feel something, but she wasn't sure. And that was a funny sound. And turn your feet back in. Turn your other foot back up and reach into the bush again. And in your other hand, you have a leprechaun. Keep looking at it. And she was reaching again into the bush. And put your hand back down and lift the leprechaun all the way up. Whoa, come all the way up. She heard a sound like this. And the bees got angry and they started stinging her. And she jumped up like this. One, two, three. Whoa! And the dog jumped up as well. One, two, three. Whoa! And she was looking where the bees were coming from. And of course, she took her eyes off the leprechaun and he disappeared. Let's disappear. <clears throat> All the way up. Do we have time? Yes, we do. Okay, so the little leprechaun got a little tired and he said to himself, You know what? Today I stay in my beautiful tree and I'm working from home. We all do that, right? <laughs> so he stayed at home and he heard a knock on the door. Let's knock on the door. Knock. Lift your feet. One, two, three. And he opened the door, hold on to your elbows, and open. And lower back down. There stood a man, and his name was Tim. And Tim wanted some pair of shoes. He was going to a dance, and he needed violet blue shoes. And only a leprechaun could make those beautiful shoes. But when he was talking to the leprechaun, he saw right over the leprechaun's shoulder a big pot of gold. Let's make a big pot of gold. So you open up your knees like this. This is your pot of gold. Hold on to your feet and lean over and make that big mountain of gold pieces. Oh. The man's name was Tim. He thought to himself, hmm, I come back, I find a way to get that pot of gold. And he said, you know what, I come back in a couple of days and um, pick up my shoes. But he wasn't waiting. He was hiding in the forest. And the leprechaun went for a walk. And the man was hiding behind the trees. And he Sneak again all the way. It's hiding on his belly. Come all the way back down. And he lifts it up like a snake would. So hands go right beside your chest. And then you lift up. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And you can make a snake sound if you like. And he reached his arms out. And after three, you catch him. One, two, three. Oh, he got him and he said, oh, hmm. I want your pot of gold. Now, I'm not taking my eyes off you. And, you know, I want it now. Give me all of it. Don't keep anything. I want to be rich. <sighs> Again, it was time for that magic trick to think. Be smart. So he put his hands onto his heart and he said to himself, he thought to himself, and he did it as well. For Philly B, you can trick me. For I am as smart as smart can be. I breathe in deep. I breathe out long. Watch how calm and clear 
I could come. And he had an idea. He would say to the man, Tim, of course, I show you where I hit that pot of gold. Let's go there. So they walked through the fields and they found a big field with one beautiful red flower. Let's come into flower pose. So we put our feet back together. We did a couple of times now, right? But now we are making a flower. So we are lifting up our feet. We have to balance. I know that's a tough one, but see if you can do it. Put your feet together, hands are looking out. Oh, flower pose. It was a beautiful red flower and she, the flower smelled fantastic. And the little leprechaun said to him, I hid my uh, pot of gold underneath that flower. The man had no uh, shadow of spade with him, but he did not care. He knew that the leprechaun had to tell him the truth, and this is where his pot of gold was. <clears throat> he said, okay, and he took his eyes off the leprechaun, and the leprechaun disappeared. He had just had as small as the rock or a mouse. So the man went home, and he got his spade, his shovel. And he came back to the big field with the one red, beautiful flower. But when he came to the field, to the big field, there were 200, 300, maybe even 500 red flowers everywhere. Oh, the leprechaun had tricked him. He tried. He opened up, opened up your feet. We come into a wood shop, of course. We lift, we put the hands together, bring them over our head, and he started digging underneath a couple of those red flowers. Let's do it. One, two, three. And lift all the way up. He tried and he tried and then the sun went down and the moon and the stars came up. He knew that there was no way he would find the pot of gold. The leprechaun had tricked him. Sit back down into crisscross applesauce. So after all these things happened to all the leprechaun, he decided that it was time to find a much better place to hide his pot of gold. And he decided that it was at the end of the rainbow. So now bring your hands back to the side and we are making a beautiful rainbow again. All the way up, bring the hands back down. Let's do it one more time. Lift all the way up and all the way down. It was a beautiful rainbow. And he hit his part of gold and then he disappeared. Slowly come back up. Now, whenever you walk through a field and you can hear a tap, 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 maybe you do your magic trick, right? You can put your hands onto your heart and you can breathe in deep and you can breathe out long and then your mind becomes clear and calm exactly like the leprechaun and maybe you don't catch him maybe you just talk to him and you say hello how are you doing i'm so happy i meet a magical being like you and maybe he's telling you a story and maybe if you're really nice he grants you a wish or two or three all right now my friends it's time for a little lie down. So find a pillow or maybe a blanket. And I tell you a little tiny story about a rainbow. Not really a story, but we do a little rainbow meditation. So lie down and put your hands on your belly like this. 
And then you can close your eyes. And you can also keep your knees bent like that. And I come a little closer to you to tell you a rainbow meditation. But you keep lying on your back and you relax. <clears throat> keep your eyes closed <clears throat> and breathe and rest. We had a big adventure. It's like you are falling asleep. Let go of all your thoughts. Just feel your breath in and out your nose. And I wait for everyone to settle, to sigh and melt. You can lose all the wiggles and last movements. And when you're silent and still, then I know you are ready to listen. With every breath, you become more and more relaxed. You feel warm. like with our candle at the beginning. Maybe you saw a light. Maybe it was gold and silver. Now, in your imagination, you begin walking down a beautiful path. The storm is just clearing. And in the sky, right in front of you, is a full, beautiful rainbow. You are able, like a leprechaun, to go and stand right underneath its arch. And as you do, you can feel, you can hear the rainbow whispering to you. Every color whispers something different. You can hear the red and you feel it. The red is whispering, you are strong. The orange is whispering, you are joyful. The yellow is whispering, you are confident. The green is whispering, you are caring. The blue is whispering, you tell the truth. Indigo whispers to you, you are smart. The violet whispers to you, you are understanding and kind. The rainbow's words, warm and colorful light fills you with a very relaxing and comfortable feeling. You are happy and peaceful. You are centered. You feel all the colors and all the power of the rainbow. But now it's time to come back into the room, onto your mat. Take a deep breath. And then gently begin to wiggle your toes, 
and your fingers. And then stretch slowly like you're underwater. Slow motion, nice or like a cat. <clears throat> and when you're ready, you come to a comfortable seated position. Cross cross at the sauce. <clears throat> and then you put the hands in front of your chest. Take a deep breath in and bring the chin to your chest. And we say after three together. Namaste. One, two, three. Namaste. Mm 